Step one, get some sweet green tea. Step two, add kombucha. And step three, toss in a scoby. That's literally it. Cover it with a cloth and wait. Now, if you don't have a scoby, the next best thing is to get one from a friend. If you don't have a friend, then you've made an excellent choice in watching this video. Let's make some scratch booch! Kombucha has been getting a good deal of attention lately, mostly as an amazing probiotic panacea that will turn you from gassy to gorgeous. But it's not magic, it's microbes. And they're going to do all the heavy lifting in this ferment. Ideally, you'll want something glass for growing a scoby so you can watch its progress. I'm using a 750 ml or 25 ounce mason jar. You'll want a cloth or paper towel to cover the jar. This will keep mold spores out of the jar so that they can stay where they belong, suspended in the air you breathe. And lastly, something to hold that cloth in place. To make kombucha, your tap water will probably be fine. But if you're feeling ambitious, by all means, use something fancy and reverse osmosified. However, you're going to want to skip the fancy organic sweeteners here. Stick to old-fashioned white sugar. Unlike you, bacteria and yeast thrive on the pure, processed white stuff. The final ingredient is, of course, tea. I'm going to recommend organic green tea, and I know there are a lot of people out there backing black tea as the best choice. But I've found green tea promotes scoby growth like nothing else. Check out this video if you're not convinced. If you're made of money and own a kettle, go ahead and use that. For the rest of us in the 99%, add 1 liter or 34 ounces of tap water to a pot and bring to a boil. Once the water has stopped boiling, toss in two tea bags. If you're clever, you may have noticed that this is not green tea. But let's go ahead and pretend that it is. Let the tea steep for about 3 minutes. Take out the bags, there's no need to squeeze these. This is a good time to add your sugar. I'm using 50 grams, which works out to about 4 tablespoons. You're going to need to get your hands on some unpasteurized kombucha in order to make your own. Luckily, it's not hard to come by these days. Make sure you grab the grossest looking one that you can. Extra points if it has boogery looking things floating in it. Set aside 100 milliliters, or 3.5 ounces, to inoculate your tea. Pour half a liter, or 500 milliliters, of tea into your jar, and then inoculate with your live kombucha. This serves not only to supply the tea with a culture of bacteria and yeast, but to lower the pH. Acidifying the tea stops mold, and mold stops the good times. Don't forget to cover your jar. If you leave this open, it will spoil. Wow, how neat. Where before there was no scoby, there is now a scoby. Go ahead and pull it out, although make sure you wash your hands first. This one is real clean, juicy, and solid. Yours might be goopy, brown, or layered, but as long as it's not growing fuzzy blue or black stuff, it's going to work just fine. A SCOBY is actually what's known as a biofilm. It's a matrix of cellulose, the stuff paper or cotton is made of, with yeast and bacteria occupying the space in between. These include many different species, but include vinegar-producing acetic acid bacteria and alcohol-producing yeast. Yes, that's right, kombucha can be alcoholic. You have a scoby! Great! Now make some sweet tea again! Remember, green tea and 50 grams of sugar per liter.
Once your tea is done, toss in the SCOBY. Was your tea still hot? Then your SCOBY is dead now. There is no recovering from this. Make sure your tea is cool to room temperature. Let's try that again. Also, hopefully you kept some of the tea you used to grow your SCOBY. This is called starter tea, but it's basically kombucha, and it will once again lower the pH and prevent mold growth. How much you add is going to depend on how sour it is. If it still tastes like kombucha, add around 15% of the total volume. If it tastes like vinegar, go easy on it. How do you know when your kombucha is ready? Tasting it is a good start. You may also notice bubbles or gunk growing on the bottom. These are good signs. For a fizzy kombucha, pour it into a sealable, pressure-tolerant bottle. Tossing in a little more sugar will increase the carbonation potential. Store your sealed bottles at room temperature for four or more days. The longer it goes, the more carbonation, but it will also get a little more sour. And voila! Kombucha. Better than the stuff you buy at your local organic foods emporium, and a fraction of the price. So how did this one turn out? Dang bubbly, for one. Unflavored kombucha from green tea can actually take on a bit of a cider flavor. And this one was one of those. Your scoby is going to keep growing, by the way. You can split it and store them in a jar of ripe kombucha for several weeks or until science comes up with a good use for them. And that's it! If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. I would be stoked to expand my audience beyond my girlfriend and her parents. Thanks for watching!